All right, ladies and gentlemen, kids do not watch this. This is the Shut Your Mouth Lounge featuring yours truly, the one and only Pink Sparkle Puff. Also featuring my co host here today, Atty the Hero. And at the moment, not featuring Alex, who has been, I don't know, kidnapped, maybe? There's a ransom note in the mail. We haven't deciphered it yet because the handwriting is very poor. Must have been written by a doctor. Yeah, possibly. A Alex may have been kidnapped by a doctor or just an uh, illiterate hobo on the street. We'll never know. Well, we might know someday. Depends on the police report that we get in the mail in the next three to four business days. That's assuming we get it. Until, until that mystery is solved, it will be me and Addie here. And once again, this is the Shut Your Mouth Lounge. Thank you for being here. All right. Addy. Yes, me. What is coming out of my channel? Well, probably some Dead by Daylight, uh, probably 2K23, Universe Mode, and then maybe some Street Fighter Six. That is exactly right. You're a genie. It's messed up. I don't even need to be here. You've got this covered. <laughs> it's almost like we're former lake or something. Yeah. Speak what's coming out on my channel, then. Well, you haven't been working on anything that I recall, so potentially nothing. Right. <laughs> Correct. Indeed. Indeed. Now, I, I will need you to tell me what's coming out on the group channel, because as many times as you've laid down that formula, I have not picked up on it, and it's also prone to some minor changes every now and again. Yeah. So, on the group channel, we have uh, Katamari, Dan, uh, Dark Souls 2, Dan, actually, no, between those two, I think. Timing is hard. Between those two is... Fighting games are, because we missed it last week. Oh ho! But yeah, after Dark Souls 2, we have uh, a short, which is, which is Street Fighter 6, then uh, SVC Chaos. Oh ho! And finally, on Saturday, more Street Fighter 6. Alright then, I like it. Very nice. So yeah, that's it for the channels. Pink, your week. My week. All right, let's start off with the basic stuff that we already know. 2K23, Mario Kart. I was about to say Wii. It's not been on the Wii for quite a while. Um, let's see. Obviously, Dead by Daylight with Mike and Alex as well. He has joined in on the action recently because Mike got his mic working again. There's a sentence for you. And so now, every now and then on occasion, we'll meet up in the afternoons and play for a little while, and then it turns into a long-ass while, and that's why I'm tired right now. <laughs> so, uh, Dead by Dead left Mike and Alex. Um, in my own time, every now and again, I've been picking up uh, Stronghold and Stronghold Crusader from 2001 and two, respectively, I think. That or 2002 and three, and around the early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, and I picked that up recently again because on Twitter, the Firefly Studios account announced that they'd be re releasing, or rather re-releasing, the Stronghold Definitive Edition this November 7th. Ah. And, yeah, that, that got me pretty hyped because this is very much the game of my childhood. So it g gives me all the nostalgia. What am I looking for? The nostalgia points, the nostalgia feet. So, uh, yeah, I've been going back and playing that again, trying to pick up on the old Crusader RTS and remember what the good strategies are and what bad ones are, how to avoid making bad decisions and making good decisions instead. Yeah. It's been fun. I liked it. Fun castle builder, RTS strategy game, but not in a super overwhelming way like Age of Empires. So, it, it works. One day I'm going to actually need to play through Age of Empires like fully and stick with it. Because it looks like it's such a fun game, but I, I always tend to bounce off after like 20 minutes of being in the 
cla ancient or classical era and then not really getting anywhere because I'm terrible at the game. But one day, I'll, I'll try and get good. Um, let's see. Let's see. Did I have anything uh, to talk about movie-wise? Because I watched something. Well, I watched Con Air, but I actually watched that last week. I just didn't bring it up on the podcast. But, yeah, that's just a Nicolas Cage movie. It's funny. It's nice. It's an action movie as well. So, got... Uh, how do I describe it? It's in in similar style to like Die Hard, but not not so much that they're super comparable. It's uh, Nicholas Cage arrested at the start of the movie for invol an uh, actually rather voluntary manslaughter accident. Accidentally kills a guy in a drunken rage after the guy who tries to get with his girl or whatever. Uh, and because Nicholas is Cage, is, Nicholas Cage's character is a former military person of some sort, the uh, the judge deems him too unsafe to be left out in public, so they lock him up, which is, according to m most people you'd ask, completely ridiculous. So he spends his time in prison, is a good little boy, and then gets to go out on parole eventually. And the day he gets to go out on parole, they're transferring him between prisons on a plane, and the prisoner is hijacking the plane, and now he's wrapped up in all that, and it's, it's a good time. It's a pretty standard movie, I'd say, but it's good. Um, I want to say there was something else I watched recently, but, uh, hmm, I can't remember it. It was a television. Oh, I, I guess I was watching X-Men animated series as well, but I mentioned that on a couple podcasts ago, actually, because that was fairly recent, and I slowly but surely kept going with that. Um, Street Fighter! I've been putting a lot of time into ranked mode with the one and only... Pimento. Why am I blinking? His... Dalsim. Ah. Dalsim. And I, I've actually been getting kind of better at him. Kind of understanding a bit more to his character. I'm not good with him by any stretch of the imagination, but my neutral game is getting good because that's all I can rely on because I can't do any of the special stuff. I mean, so you think you're playing on modern. You can't really have anything about your, about your neutral game. That's true. Have Have you figured out how to uh, get the game to do the auto combos yet? No. You should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause like I actually uh, yeah. went and did their little character guide things, and I thought it would be helpful. I it's just I videos. No, if, if you want, kind of wasn't it wasn't helpful at all. Yeah, no, the the stuff that you want, because like the character guides are good for people like W. Where he's he's intermediate, but but you know, and and that he likes likes uh, watching videos. If if you want to learn how to play a character with some of the tutorial stuff in this game, you wanna hit up the combo trials. You wanna go into the, the actual tutorial section and and look up how the fuck do I do auto combos in modern, and then hit up the combo trials. Because <laughs> <laughs> like that, that that's all of the information that you are missing, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, probably. But yeah, because like, you know, as far as I can tell, that's the only thing, major thing that you're not using about Modern is just, just the, the uh, auto combos that they included that can cancel into like super and shit. Yeah, for a long time I wasn't even taking full advantage of the Modern control scheme either because I would still do the input control scheme inputs. Or you're supposed to. Let, let me rephrase that. I was doing the normal inputs for the controls when there were plenty of times I w could have just used the button. To get it out faster and accurately. It's like, with Kami, I can do the spiral arrow. And that's about it. And then with other characters, if I'm using modern controls and I don't know what they do, I should just be hitting the special button and they'll do the thing for me. Rather than shaking my control stick around and just hitting it random buttons like I normally do in fighting games. I mean, the thing pink is, that, is that if you know how to do a move, and if you, do, if you know how to do it with, with some, some haste, then technically that's better than doing it with the special button because the special button uh, puts down the, the damage. But if you could, if you do it with the normal input and the game actually reads it unlike with Ken, then you get you get uh, you get your dam you get the damage back. Right. So there there's some there's some uh what you call it? Some there's, strategy there's there. still benefit to using the uh, inputs, is what you're trying to say. Yeah. There's actually more benefit to using the inputs. Yes, yeah, so overall, if you want to play the game, you have to play the game, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. 
I didn't buy this game to play this game. I've been bamboozled. Uh, yeah, that that's uh, most of the Street Fighter did this week because I didn't put a lot of time into it. Just a uh, just a little bit of ranked with Dalsim and a little bit of ranked with Cami, and I still kind of suck with Cami. So that's a that's a problem that I'm looking to fix. Outside of Street Fighter, um, played 2K23, which is not a big deal or anything, but I played it with Alex and Mike last night, and we were we were having a blasty blast, and uh, there was a weird glitch that happened with the Steam thing, and this is the only reason why I bring up 2K23 at all, in where Mike was using two controllers with one controller, so he was able to play as two people simultaneously, and they do the same actions as whatever is, whatever he was inputting. Nice. So yeah, that that was pretty amazing, and it, it all came to true head when we did a three man tag team match. Well, not not three man tag team, a three team tag team match. I was Razor Ramon and Scott Hall. Alex was six and X Pac. And then Mike was Kevin Nash and Diesel. It was amazing, and it was hilarious because the Diesels and Kevin Nash, they would move in stereo. I mean, every now and again, we he, he'd get a bit discombobulated, and, you know, Kevin Nash would be on one side of the ring, and Diesel would be on the outside somewhere else. And so, it, it even though they're moving in stereo and putting the same inputs, they're so far away from each other that it doesn't look like it. But every now and again, they'd be, like, totally linked up and right next to each other. So it's just two Kevin Nashes wailing on somebody in stereo, and it was amazing. Yeah. So, so yeah, that, that, that was my, my Friday night. That was, that, was, that was a fun, crazy time. Um, let's see. Let's see. Yeah. I think there's something else. But, yeah, but I, I can't think of anything else. Uh, let me double, double check real quick with it, because I think I did something new and fun for them, but I don't know. Mm. Nope, not really. Uh-oh. What? Oh, it's always barking, so I think people have arrived home or something. Something uh, or another, but it doesn't matter. He's, he's fine. Uh, nope, I think that just about wraps up my week. All right. Well, what have I done? Some did I actually play three Street Fighter this week? I don't think I have. <laughs> All right, not Street Fighter Six, I guess. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, what did I do? Well, I've been playing Wild Arms. It's an old PS. What is that? Wild Arms is an old PS One RPG. Oh. I am told it is 30 hours. Oh my. And that it, is many an hour. I would like to remind you that, that we, are, we, are, we are technically recording, still recording Persona, which is 80. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, since then, I haven't uh, deleted Persona off my hard drive, I'm pretty sure. And even if I did, I can download it in like five minutes. So when, we can just continue it whenever. Oh, nice. But yeah. So Wild, Wild Arms, it's uh, I don't know if Square had, to, had something to do with it. It feels it it feels like they they or if 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 it's not made by Square, then it's people trying to do the whole classic Square uh sort of get up with R with fantasy RPGs. Only this time, instead of it being you know medieval uh Europe inspired fantasy RPG, it's Wild West inspired uh. uh RPG, except for the part where there's no Wild West. <laughs> oh. Like, Wild Arms is supposed to have, uh, like, once again, Wild, Wild Arms is supposed to, from all of the, the artwork that I've seen, be, you know, vaguely Wild West themed. And it's not, it's just, what if some very, very vaguely, just like very, very loosely tal to, tal to Wild West designed characters, very medieval Europe. <laughs> Ah, and that disappointed me a lot because I I started started this up going, hey, cowboy RPG 
sure, that seems cool. You would think. And like, like instead, instead of a cyborg RPG, I just have Nightman, but he has a revolver. Jeez. <laughs> like, that, that's it, pretty much. Amazing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I've been playing that. It's it's been fun, but uh, it it's also old. <laughs> you can, can tell it's old. I am I'm uh, uh. I am very glad that uh that the the PlayStation emulation has quick saves and shit, so I can just abuse the saves. It has, yeah. it has a rewind feature, so I don't have to die ever. Nice. So I'm a fan of not dying personally. Yeah, and like overall. The game isn't even that hard. Like I don't even have to use rewind. <laughs> it's just there. If if I if I like fall into something or if something sets me back by like you know a couple of minutes, I can just go no. That's pretty much all I what I use rewind for. Cause like the game isn't even hard. I I have a guide open whenever I play it on the side because that's how I play RPGs. I like playing them with a guide. So so whenever I'm I get lost, I can just look at the guide and the guide, the guide is like turn around asshole, and I turn around and that's where the thing is supposed to find. <laughs> But yeah, like I have a guide open, and one of the bosses. I also like checking the bosses' health, 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 uh, value because the game doesn't tell you. I even checked. I have analyzed, which is supposed to, you know, tell you the all of the stuff about the enemy, like uh, Goombala. I think her name is in in Mario RPG. Yeah, or Paper Mario actually. But uh, yeah, Paper Mario, Paper Mario, Paper Mario, and Mario RPG are the same series to me. So basically. But yeah, like you know, it's, it's supposed to take the uh, the health amount and shit like that. And and I tried it on a boss, and it just said, "I don't know." And I, <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm glad I wasted a turn on this. So yeah, I open I open up the guide to tell me actually how how much health this thing has, and it's like, all right, this is the first actual boss. It, I had the least problem with that boss so far. Like I, I had more, uh, I had more problems with some of the trash mobs leading up to the boss. Cause one of the mobs that you have, to, you can find one of the, the random encounters you can get is just a fucking dragon, just a full size dragon. It has two thousand health. <laughs> oh my! For comparison's sake, the boss that the dragon is guarding has five thousand. So. Oh my! Yeah. So, you know, pretty much a mini boss, and you can just get it randomly because fuck you, why not? Yeah. Sounds rational to me. And yeah, there's, there, there, there are some things that, that it made, makes me think about that this game does. Like how, you know, people say over, the, you know, I don't know, uh, like Last of Us or whatever. I don't know what, what it would have been before that. Last of Us is the one I see point out a lot. But, you know, like Last of Us is trying to push games to be cinematic and shit. What the fuck are RPGs? They are JRPGs, man. <laughs> like JRPGs, JRPGs are. A story. There's that, that, yeah. I'll let you do this gameplay. <laughs> In theory. And like, I don't even load uh, or turn-based stuff like I used to, which like, I avoided a lot of games. Final Fantasy, most notably, because it was turn-based, and I just don't, I, I, I don't enjoy turn-based. But then I played Persona, and I went, hmm, maybe if I actually care about what's going on, I actually, I, I don't mind turn-based that much. <laughs> But there's also some dumb things about uh, level design, like in classic JRPG specifically, where I get stuck, uh, like I get lost in, in, in like I don't know a dungeon. Like it, I get lost in the half of a dungeon, and I go, and I don't know if I want to actually find a way out. I might just look up, look up someone else playing through this game because, like, I'm in it for the story. <laughs> yeah. And at that, at that point, what, what's the difference between me watching someone else play and me actually playing the game when I'm, I'm not really engaging with the gameplay? Yeah, that's a fair point. Uh, but yeah. As, as for comparisons to, you know, to other uh, classic RPGs I've played, it's fine. The, the balancing seems a lot less assholeish than... Final Fantasy, for example, which I've only played 
do seven and nine in Final Fantasy, I think. Ah. But Final Fantasy, like the, actually the, the 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 best way I can put it is Final Fantasy has a lot more deliberate, uh, pacing with with the the enemies. Like Final Fantasy knows where you are, and Final Fantasy knows exactly what to what to send to you, so that you won't die, but it will be close. Like Final Fantasy, uh-huh. Final Fantasy generally knows how to do how to do a challenge if you're not, uh, just you know, just sticking around in in one spot, spot and grinding away. But like, right. but like, even during my playthrough of Final Fantasy VII, like I don't do grinding, and I didn't have to. Seven respected that I don't do grinding, and I think the only <laughs> the only boss that gave me like real trouble that that isn't to be expected. Like you know the the only boss that gave me a whole lot of uh problems was just I believe when you fight Sephiroth at the end, it's supposed to be a victory lap, but if you're under level, Sephiroth can still kill you, and that's what happened to me. <laughs> Because like somehow I beat the final boss under level, but then Sephiroth decided he no actually go grind, <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> if ever it says what I instead what I did is just I looked up the literally, literally just the ending of the game because I'd already beat it technically. So whatever. Yeah. No, I'm wrong. I don't remember what the fuck I did because I I I remember watching the final cutscene myself, and I remember dying to Sephiroth. I might have beaten Sephiroth and I, I just deleted it from my memory banks. Because I simply, I I remember actually watching it on my PS1 Classic, watching the the stuff that's before Sephiroth and the uh, the final fight battle with Sephiroth and the the ending cutscene after Sephiroth. I I clearly remember those, but not actually fight, fighting Sephiroth in in the victory lap that's supposed to be like three turns. <laughs> so who knows what happened? I guess. Yeah. Either which way, wild arms, yeah. Uh, there's a whole series of this. I started because I saw it all of them, not all of them, but most of them were on PS Plus, up to four at least, I think. So I figured, all hey, right. maybe if I enjoy it, then I'll play through the series. And I mean, I don't know if I'd call what I'm doing enjoying here, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll beat this game because I'm already, like, nearly halfway through the game. From what I can tell, I'm like one third of the way in. Yeah. So I'll I pro- I'll probably finish this game, and then if it, if it doesn't sour me on it throughout throughout that, then I'll give a, give a look to the start of, start of two, and if that hooks me, then I I might continue playing through the series. If not, then I'll just quit. Fair enough. Then I also played the Circus Electric. The, the what now? The Circus Electric. Okay. The Circus Electric is a okay. The Circus Circus Electric is the darkest dungeon, but it has an explicit so- story and also worse graphics. <laughs> right then, like you know, it was to be expected that the darkest that the darkest dungeon will have its own uh, games trying to do what it's done. Circus Electric is very blatant in how much it's trying to be Darkest Dungeon with some, you know, adjustments to make it so it's not infringing. Right. The graphics are overall, like, the, the graphics and art style are, I'd say, worse, just because, you know, they're, they're, you can't really, like, I understand why they went with the art style that they, they went with. It saves on money. Like, you know, you, generally, people don't have enough passion and or money to put towards uh, hand yeah. drawing frames, yeah, for every character for like a hundred characters. <laughs> yeah, so I can understand why they went with the, with the route of three D models with, you know, some filters thrown and cell shading and shit. I get that. It still looks worse. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's not really it's not really a criticism. I'm just saying this ob- objectively. This looks worse than that. But at the same time, whatever. Really, the, yep. the the thing here, the thing that that made me quit quit the circuit side trick is that I just didn't care, because like Darkest Dungeon. I mean, this is a problem with Darkest Dungeon too for me. Like, I, I sometimes I I go, man, I want to play Darkest Dungeon, and I play Darkest Dungeon for like a week, but I play it play it for the entire days for that week, and I just stop playing yeah. Darkest Dungeon for the next half a year. Yeah. With the circuit side trick, because that's an explicit explicit story, I felt like I wanted to, you know, just finish that. And then and then be done with it. 
and I got most of the way there. There are six chapters. I got I was in chapter five. But for the first four chapters, the enemies were kind of pushovers. They, they didn't really do much. And then in chapter uh. five, in chapter five, there's suddenly this uh, enemy type who, even if you're the same level, can deal 75% damage in one hit. <laughs> oh. And the encounters can spawn more than one. Oh. And I just suddenly start, started uh, losing all of, all, of my, all of my characters. And I spent hours on building those characters up. And I just went, you know what, no. And then you the game. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, you know, if it's, if it's one of those things where, like, oh, I'm already leveled, or I'm doing play- best plays, I can get it. But no, there's characters whose entire game exists is just, you can't attack me because I'm in a stance or whatever. That, can, that character has an that, that, that attack that deals 75% damage can also break stances without t- triggering the stance. <laughs> right. And, like, you know, depending on which class you are, which I don't, I can't really put comparisons, but, like, you know, the, the tanks go down in four of those hits at the same level, mind you. Four of, four of those hits. The DPS characters go down in two. And that's, oh. assuming, that's assuming they don't get criticals. <laughs> And like once again, you know, Darkest Dungeon inspiration. If it was an easier Darkest Dungeon, I could at least say, hey, if, if Darkest Dungeon was hard, hard for you, you can play Circuit Select Shriek and then get, get that fill because it, it is a very much the same uh, game design. Well, not exactly the same, but you know, it's very much inspired by Darkest Dungeon and its game design, but also easier. But it's fucking not because it's easier for most of the game and then suddenly you die. <laughs> hey. Like at, at least Darkest Dungeon doesn't lie to you. <laughs> Darkest Dungeon is just, is just, it's just like, hey, don't get attached to your characters, okay? Everyone is going to die. Yeah, I, I think that's another part that, that makes, makes it suckier in, in uh, Circus of Street than Darkest Dungeon. In Darkest Dungeon, your characters level up. You don't have to think about shit. Your characters level up. All right, you, you might, you might want to like, you know, upgrade their, their moves or whatever, but like, their stats increase by them, them, themselves because, they, because of their class. And then they're just there. They, they're there to fight. In Circus of Street, if they level up, you have to go into a menu. You have to press, okay, I want to level this character up. And then you have to go and edit their stats, stats yourself, personally. And then you, then you can upgrade your moves. For every single character. Oh, then. Which, you know, the, the, disregarding how much busy work that is, for no real reason. That means that I am more attached to, to these characters, because I know their stats. I know what I set their stats to. I need these stats for the performances. <laughs> right. Like, when, when, I, when I lose a, lose a guy, it's not just, oh, I lost my best tank. It's, oh, I lost my best tank, also one of my best performers. Right, yeah, yeah. Like there's, there's another fr- frustration when the character is serving multiple purposes. And you just lose all of those in, in one quick swoop because you got, you got, you got meshed up against, against an enemy type that just kills it instantly. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the circus and I shriek. There was an idea here. <laughs> <laughs> then what else did I do? Uh, well, I played Multiplot Type Lumina. What the heck is that? Multiplot Type Lumina is a fighting game. It is oh. a continuation continuation of the Multiplot series, which is on Fightcade, but <laughs> oh. Well, most of them. Uh, current code isn't, but whatever. I, I I own current code, so it doesn't bother me. And I don't. It, it's not. The, it's not the sort of game that you would you would care for, Pink. I see. But yeah, Type Lumina introduced auto combos, which of course, as you know, I love. <laughs> it's one of those things where, like, I turned. I tried it out with the auto combos first because, of course, give it a look. It felt like shit because the auto combos always feel like shit. <laughs> right. Like you, you will notice that a lot of my criticism when it comes to fighting games boils down to I don't like how this thing feels, therefore it is bad. Which you know, so, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that is objective. So sometimes, usually it's it's just objective. But like you know, that's also why I don't like Mortal Kombat. It's not it's not just I don't like these character designs or whatever, which it can be the case, like in Killer Instinct's case. 
But no, I, I just don't like how Mortal, Com how Mortal Kombat feels to control, usually. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, felt, it felt bad to control. Then I, I noticed while I was selecting the character that you can you can adjust how much auto combos you get. You can make, set it so you only have auto combos on the ground. You can set it so you, can, you only have auto combos in the air. You can set it so you just don't have auto combos. That's what I did. And uh -huh. if you turn off the auto combos, the game can be fun. Who the thunk? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, there's a lot of reasons that I don't think you'd be interested in the game because the, most of the like, the cast is. Well, Melty Blood is a spin-off of a spin-off of, of a visual novel, which is which is a separate universe of another oh, series. What? Yeah, <laughs> like basically, Mel this Melty Blood fighting game series is a spin-off of a spin-off of a spin-off of a spin-off, more or less. Uh, that sounds complicated. Yes, and. Uh, the, most of the character designs, because it's a visual novel game you originally, most of the designs of the, for the characters are just like women. Anime oh, girl. Yeah. Anime girl, number five. Yeah. Shoda. Classic. Classic. Uh, who the fuck do I point out? Joe from my sauce, who you don't even know who that is, either which way, but whatever. It is actually just him. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the Count of Monte Cristo. I'm not joking. He's actually in this game. What? Yeah. The Count of Monte Cristo has one of the most interesting designs because it's not just Japanese schoolboy or girl. Fair enough. Like, legitimately, there's two characters that have three characters that have somewhat of an interesting design. There's there's a puppeteer rushdown character, which <laughs> yeah. So like uh, the, no, you don't, yeah, you haven't played Days Two, uh, re you remember uh Eddie from uh Guilty Gear? Yes. Okay, so imagine. Well, actually, no, you don't need to imagine because that's what Eddie is. That he's also a rushdown puppeteer character, but basically, yeah, just Eddie. You you can you can send the, you can send the puppet to do shit. Also, you're supposed to be up in people's faces and, and punching them actively, while you do that. Ah. But yeah, that that character in this game has an interesting design because instead of being generic schoolboy, he's generic anime boy, which is still a more interesting design <laughs> than generic schoolboy. Yeah. Then, as I've said, the Count of Monte Cristo. He's the Count of yeah. Monte Cristo. And then Nekoark. Now, Pink, I cannot send you a picture because uh, it would fuck up the recording. But I, but I will tr still try my best, actually, to try and send you a picture of Nekoark. Nekoark. All right. Nekoark is the troll character. Just to that out. All right. So, Nekoark is this small, like, uh, roughly knee height <laughs> character. Who is drawn in a very uh like children's cartoon way? All right. And she's a she's a cat, cat girl, and she shoots fires. She shoots lasers from her eyes. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, the Nico work is the best is the best best character in the in the game just because she's actually interesting. Unlike most of the other guests, <laughs> one of her supers is killing you with a with a live stream or, or something like that. I forget. <laughs> All right, I am still in the process of getting you the picture. But yeah, if if this this character before I I I am on five five separate uh, like conversations oh, in wow. my head. But yeah, this character is, is the the only reason that W wants to play uh, wants to play multi blood. Because he saw a video of, of this character and he was like, okay, yes, that is the bullshit. That is, uh. that is the bullshit. Because, like, Nekoark, <laughs> like, like, okay, 
the best way I can, I can, the best, uh, what you call comparison that I, I can, uh, come up with for that quirk is imagine if Faust was on, was on high cat girl. <laughs> Oh, that sounds pretty awesome. Why can't I share this picture? Bloody hell. Alright, fuck it. Pink, you just have to look, look, look her up on your own. Alright, uh, tell me how to spell it. N. E. C. O. Space. A. R. C. Nick Wark. Uh, oh my gosh, those eyes are huge. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So, so she she's the she's the only character who who you might look at and go, hey, that's actually kind of funny. No, uh, she's not in the games that you can play. No. So you you, don't, you still don't need to play, play multi blood. <laughs> I guess so. Wait, I'm wrong. Isn't isn't Type Lumino on the Game Pass? I don't know. If if memory serves, I think Type Lumino was was put on Game Pass when it released on Xbox. So yeah. you you might be able to try her out. All if, right then. Well, either which way, yeah. Multi blood. Oh, what else did I do? Hmm. Well, I did draw. You saw the the uh, the thumbnail that I made for the asset for or assassin's yes. playthrough. Yes, it oh, was what? phenomenal. Ah, thank you. And then on 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 uh, riding on the on the back of that success, I also tried to make myself a new uh, phone background because the the old one the I didn't like like my my snout on the old one. <laughs> it's pretty much what it boils down to. The funny sentence. Yeah. I put it into the chat. The, the voice text. Okay. Hey, see it? It reminds me of Persona. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see it. <laughs> Uh. Yeah, this is this is some somewhere deep in Mentos. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think I think I did not did not the right job. The the uh the proportions like I I tried to go for uh what you call it foreshortening. Yeah. And whenever I try to go for foreshortening, it never works. <laughs> <laughs> But it, I, I'll, I'll have to learn someday, and I mean I try <laughs> every every time. But it always just come, it comes out like looking looking like I just I just have like a big arm or whatever, or in this case a big left leg. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I also try to do this because the uh, what you call it. The thumbnail that I made was in chibi style because that's what I wanted to do. I felt like it felt like making drawing something in chibi, and I figured, hey, if, like usually we're not really like the most serious people when it comes when it comes to, like the two of us playing playing a game. So like whatever it it fits that we're just stumbling our way through. I mean, it, even the even the, the whole uh what you call it the the thumbnail is supposed to show you this thinking. That's why yeah. it's red. Because when, when you desync, the, the animus goes red and all that, and I try to make, make it so it's all glitchy and uh, have the DNA strands and shit. I don't know how much of that actually came through the thumbnail. <laughs> but, like, the, there's, like, you know, the, the, the background on that one isn't just a mishmash. I actually ha had, a, had a plan for the background on that one. Oh. On this one, I literally just went, okay, fuck it. Shapes. Nice. And I think it worked out. Like, you know, it's. It, I feel like chaos is a, is a good good uh, aesthetic for me to have because I'm fairly good good at showing showcasing it. <laughs> <laughs> at least with the backgrounds, I'm pretty good at making making uh, aesthetically somewhat pleasing chaos. Yeah. 
But yeah, also like the I don't know if uh the the shading on on me is is weird in this one. I actually put put a filter on 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 the the drawing to make it pop out more <laughs> with, the, with the grading because if I didn't do didn't do it then uh if it uh what you call it like I, I blended it a bit too much. <laughs> right. And yeah, so I, I did did this. I guess I'm pretty good at backgrounds now, at least as long as they 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 can be abstract. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that. And then did I do anything else? Hmm. I guess as a short note. I went back to Kingdom Hearts 3, I, a couple of months ago I started a critical playthrough of that too, after I finished Kingdom Hearts 2 on critical, so I played on of 3, and then I reached a point where I skipped to the cutscene, and the cutscene was supposed to tell, tell me something very in, uh, important gameplay-wise, and I didn't remember what I need to do, so, so I quit. Oh yeah. So I quit for a while, and then, uh, they said, oh yeah, no, I, I remember what the problem is. So the, the when you do, when you watch the cutscene, I and mean, even when you skip it the first time, it's supposed to give you a, a, a pop-up thing, a re reaction that you can press, and that reaction is supposed to help you win the fight. Uh -huh. If if you fight, if you die during the fight, the reaction doesn't come back unless it triggers naturally, because otherwise it's scripted, and the script, scripted one doesn't play 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 again when you die. Oh, and that was the problem: is that I would keep dying to this to this one part where they introduce a mechanic. Because for the tutorial, you're supposed to not die. But because I'm critical, dying is very much possible. Right. So basically, I, I ate shit even more after, after failing it on the first, the first time, because they didn't think that that would happen. <laughs> yeah. But I got past that part. I think I'm stuck on the, on the bosses. No, I, I, I just beat the bosses, I actually. Oh, of Olympus. Which is the which like basically I'm still in the prologue of the game. Okay. But, but yeah. Uh. Really the thing that that I want that, that I want to bring up Kingdom Hearts for it, again is just like you know some it's like so, sometimes I don't play Kingdom Hearts for months because I mean <laughs> I've only played Kingdom Hearts last year, <laughs> but. <laughs> But but you, then again, like I, did, uh, I say, then then I remember. Oh yeah, Kingdom Hearts. Like I, I got access to Kingdom Hearts in like December last year, and then the Kingdom Hearts was also my most played game of the year. So <laughs> either which way, yeah, I, I don't play Kingdom Hearts, and I go, you know, me. I did, like, sometimes I just look at it and I go, I don't want to play it because you know I've played through it, played through most of the games once. I played through right. one and two multiple times by now. Yeah. And also, I just didn't have a good time with, with Birth by Sleep because Birth by Sleep is designed bad. <laughs> <laughs> like so, some people say that it's a it's a very good game and all that, and you know, it's I think it's I think context matters here a lot because Birth by Sleep is fairly high quality for a for a what you call it a PSP game because it was. It's not a PSP game anymore, <laughs> and it just doesn't it, it doesn't hold up compared when compared to the actual home console releases that that well. Right. But it's also just a thing of like the overall game 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 uh design of Bird by Sleep isn't horrible. It, it's it's fine, but the way that the way that they change the controls to accommodate being being on the move, I guess, and the the boss designs just didn't work well in my opinion and some of the most like, important parts is okay how do i interact with the game they are uh, like second to second and what are how are the bosses <laughs> right so yeah like you, you know that some, some of the most important parts bad otherwise the game's fine but you know <laughs> and as long as you ignore all of the problems with this, with this game it's good <laughs> I like your thinking. But yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm bringing all of this up. 
because I, I didn't play, play Kingdom Hearts for a while, but I, I had the space and I was like, I need to play something. <laughs> I, I want to play so, something that, that isn't Street Fighter VI. And I downloaded it, and I went, fuck, I remember why, why I like Kingdom Hearts. The Kingdom Hearts just feel, Kingdom Hearts feels so good to, to control, the mainline game. There's, you know, a bit of preference between whether you like the, the way one, 1 did it, 2 did it, or 3 did it best. Actually, no one, no, pretty much nobody likes uh, 3 did it the best, from what I can tell, but still. <laughs> but like, even though 3's are stepped down to, uh, to most people, I don't care, honestly. Like, I, I, don't, I don't find 3 as much as most other people seem to. I, I, the only part of 3 I hate, hate is the, uh, the Frozen level, because it is just the movie Frozen. Ew. Yeah. Now, allegedly, that that was uh, so, something that that Disney uh, forced on them. Allegedly. I don't doubt it. But yeah. So, yeah, the, the controls are definitely, in my opinion, the best best in two. That that that's the one that feels the most. Uh I don't want to call it well put together because there's obvious jank. I mean, the game came, came, game that game came out like twenty years ago now, or something like that. I think. Oh my. So you know, it's gonna it's gonna be so there's gonna be some jank just just by virtue of this game is fucking old. <laughs> but, yeah. But like overall, it it feels the most complete. It feels the the most uh responsive. Which three, uh, three feels a bit more floaty, and some people don't like that. I don't like that, for example. But also, there's you know, there's there's bits to love in all of them, in my opinion, in in the numbered titles. Which is why I'm trying to force you to play Kingdom Hearts one and two. But <laughs> understandable. <laughs> like I don't know if if you if you picked up the the stuff on sale. If not, doesn't matter. I'll just keep you posted, posted on whatever it goes on sale. <laughs> yeah, I actually neglected to like, pick it up on sale. I was going to, but then I forgot, and then I just never remembered. I think it's still on, still on sale. If if it is, I'll have to I'll have to pick that up because I'm not opposed to doing that. Yes, it is still on sale. It's gonna be on sale until August. So. Oh. Wait. But yeah, like if if you pick up Kingdom Hearts, like I told you, I, my my plan is regardless of what you say. <laughs> <laughs> no, but gen- genuinely, like my my uh my plan is just play through one and two. If you like one and two, then we can play the other ones. But the other ones in in that package, or uh chain of memories, which chain of memories is supposed to come between one and two, but we won't play it because it's bad. <laughs> Understandable. Like uh, I think, let me summarize chain of memories for you. What if you took Kingdom Hearts one? Well, read chain of memories. Chain of memories is a GBA game that I actually have access to, so we oh. could play the original too. But either which way, it's a uh, read chain of memories, which is what what comes in your in the package that you might buy. Is what if you took Kingdom Hearts one, but also put in a card game and you play play the game through the card game? Oh. So, you know, it's one of those things where, like, if you feel like it after playing Kingdom Hearts 1, we can check it out. What we'll probably end up doing is we'll play... Like, what we'll end up doing is what, what I did when I played through the series, which is play it for, like, an hour, go, man, I don't feel feel like putting up with this card game bullshit. It doesn't work with the way they implemented it in the Kingdom Hearts 1 and then just watch the cutscenes. <laughs> like, I'm gonna have to play the, the original for comparison sometime because the, the card game stuff isn't inherently flawed. In my opinion, like there's, it, it's definitely basic and could use some depth, but you know it, it it was fine for the most part. The the way that that turned me off of the game is how it interacts with the with the, the mechanics that they imported over from one, when they made regen of memories, which in my opinion was badly put together. <laughs> right. Allegedly, the balancing in regen of memories is better than the original. As in, the game doesn't just suddenly decide, yo fuck you go grind. <laughs> Which, like, you know, that's the thing, like, you're supposed to grind. That's how the game is designed. That's also another flaw, but, you know, it was supposed to be on the go. It's for, it was for the GBA. <laughs> but, right. But, yeah, like, allegedly, in the original Chain of Memories, even if you, if you did grind, if, if you grind, grind it uh, on going up to whatever point, point leads to the end game, even if you grind it, you, the game just told you, go grind some more. 
<laughs> it sounds ludicrous to me, but it's also it's also an RPG technically. So you know, I I can see that. But yeah, yeah. So that that, that that's also in the, in the in the thing. Then there's two. Two is good. We'll play two. Two two is my favorite of the series overall. Then you then there's a. Uh, Recoded and three three hundred and fifty fifty two over twelve days. No, it's three hundred fifty eight over two days. Numbers. <laughs> Numbers. But yeah, what you need to know about rec uh, recorded and and uh the days game is that they're not actually in the game. They're not actually games. They're movies. You watch movies. <laughs> so that's one of those things where, like, once again, if you like the if you like the games, we can watch those movies. I'm I'm up for it because I like the. Like, you know, as bad as the writing can get with Kingdom Hearts, I enjoy it. It's nostalgic. <laughs> yeah. And then also Bird by Sleep. Bird by Sleep is a game where, like, once again, if you if you get really, like, fall in love with Kingdom Hearts like, the way I did, then I'm, I'm fine with sticking around to, to do Bird by Sleep. I will not force you to play Bird by Sleep. Holy shit. <laughs> Pink, you need to play, beat the game four times. What? Yeah. So... How Bird by Sleep? Bird by Sleep is once again PSP game supposed to be on the go. So, aha. Uh -huh. But yeah, uh, Bird by Sleep. The the way that you get the full story of Bird by Sleep is by beating beating all of the characters. You have three playable characters. They have they all have their own story. You beat their their all of their stories, and if you beat them on high enough difficulty, or if you beat them while getting these collectibles, then you unlock a fourth uh story route. Which is the final one, and then, then if you be, play, beat the final one, then you beat the game, technically. Ah. Oh. So for all intents and purposes, I never beat Bird by Sleep because I didn't play the fourth story route because I couldn't be arsed. <laughs> like the the, the 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 gameplay turned me off so far that I, I just beat everyone's story uh, alone just to see if I if I unlocked the fourth story. I didn't, and then I just went went onto onto YouTube and watched the important bits. Fair enough. But yeah, so that, that, that's all of the stuff that's included, included in your package. There's another package with one, two games and, 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 and a movie that leads up to Kingdom Hearts 3 and then Kingdom Hearts 3, which, all, which in itself also <laughs> requires you to buy a movie as a DLC. <laughs> <laughs> like Kingdom Hearts, I love it. It has the same problem with, well, as Ubisoft did with the multimedia bullshit, at, although at least they like they retroactively go, hey, maybe people care about this shit. Maybe we should, I don't know, release it as the uh, see in a, in, a, in a form of a movie or whatever. Because like the the, full, the the movie that you get in the second package that that's out there, that's that that was also another game, but it was a gacha game for a phone that that was that has been discontinued. So after oh. they discontinued, so after they discontinued it, they actually got the in-house people to make on a uh, full-on CGI movie of the story of that game. <laughs> Oh, like I, you know, I, I can't, I can't be like, hey, that's that's lazy or whatever because they didn't import the game because the game, I'm sure I would have hated it. It it was a gotcha game for the phone, but <laughs> but like you know, instead of just being a compilation of all of the cutscenes or whatever, it was actually a full on fucking CGI movie. It 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 was like, did you ever watch Advent Children? No. Shit. Uh, did you see? Uh, the, the the Final Fantasy CGI cutscenes that they used to do, or they they might still do. I don't know. I don't think so. But basically, it it uh, it, it it they made it to a very high quality CGI movie. Ah. Like you know the the for all, for all of the all of the faults of the the uh the, or the the packs that, that the people seem to seem to cite. Including that they didn't include that game somehow, but <laughs> but yeah, yeah. For all of the faults, I can't really fault them for making a movie and and like you know they could have once again just done the just went with the easy uh, way out of just whatever fuck it. We'll just record record like or one intern playing through the game, just cut out all the actual gameplay bits, whatever it's not uh, important, and then just shove it in there. But no, they actually went through the effort of putting budget towards a CGI movie. Yeah. Like who knows how much money went into that shit, just so just so it actually looks interesting. 
and, and, and that this this is the sort of the sort of stuff that made me fall in love with Kingdom Hearts because, you know, on the surface it's a very, uh, I I say mediocrely written shonen, which you know shonen in itself should tell you about the the quality of writing. You should you should compare it to <laughs> All right. But like you know, it, it's kind of your run, run of the mill shonen that poses some interesting questions sometimes. But that's that's shonen. It's so, sometimes it actually has an, an interesting thought that it doesn't. It, it never follows up on. <laughs> but yeah, it's that. It's a an interesting take on RPGs and action games and how the two or two can melt together, without without going too too far into either really, because they they, they still work uh, alongside. But you know that, that that's just the surface. For me, the the reason that I fell in love with it is just the the well, for one the quirks of the time that the, the game the series originally started in that it still retains, and also uh the the small things because of the, all the small things true care truth brings. Yeah. But yeah, the, the there's a lot of uh small things that they that they they care for to to put in. There's a lot of little. Like nods to Disney stuff or like little quality of life things that that you wouldn't expect out of a game of its age, and like you know, sure the the releases were uh, done later and could have just included those. But in, in fact, I know some of those were included in the later releases because, for example, in Kingdom Hearts One, the original, you couldn't move the camera at all. <laughs> but oh no, actually I'm wrong. You could move the camera, but only sideways, and you move the camera with the, with the with the bumpers. Oh no, that's how old the game is. Yeah, like think for for comparison, I am the same age as Kingdom Hearts. It also are no, actually, I'm 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 two years older, and whatever. I'm only two years older than Kingdom Hearts, and I'm fairly old now. So, yeah. uh. Yeah, like King Kingdom Hearts can, can drink. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like you know, once again, if you want to stick around, stick around. Like if, if you play the games and you enjoy them enough to stay, stick around for the rest of the series, I'm fine with it. Like I, I, I'm up for it because I enjoy these games and I can talk about them. And there's th things where you'll go, "That's pushed and I go, "Yes, I, I know this pain." <laughs> Like, like you know, on one hand, uh, I don't, I don't know how much expertise I can bring to the table because technically I know more about Kingdom Hearts than W, but that's, you know, he, uh, he, he didn't play through all of the series I have. That's pretty much the the only difference there. Right. Like you know, W W play play through it like any sane person would, as in play playing the number of titles up to three. <laughs> Well, not, not including three, but still. Whereas I, I played through all of them as far as, as much as uh, I was allowed to with, with my current setup of like, you know, I didn't play recorded after I don't know how many years. I, I technically have played recorded, but never uh, recently. I didn't play Days, I didn't play Chain of Memories because fuck that. I will, I will not play Chain of Memories. But like every other game, even 3D, I played, and 3D was who? I don't know if you'd like 3D. I, I liked 3D more than uh, Bird by Sleep, but that's also just just like you know the small uh, improvements. Cause 3D, by the way, Pink was a 3DS game. That's on the go. Oh no! Yes. <laughs> but 3D through the the gameplay mechanics of Bird by Sleep, and also added Pokemon on it. Oh no! And here's the best part: you can ignore Pokemon. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know. Uh, people complain about having to uh to pay attention to the Pokemon and all that that they 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 in included, but I didn't, and I beat the game. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I just got two Pokemon that I that I like the look of. Uh, which, by the way, is a, is a, is a hard sell because like most of them are kind of boring. The the monsters that they created, mm. 
You know, it's it's not like for a, for a, for a game that or for a series that has very much uh, inspired both my liking also of the aesthetic, or like or whatever. How, how can I put this? Like, considering Kingdom Hearts is so close to what some Digimon look like, you would assume that that they would design more edgy Pokemon like Digimon did. But no, not really. Yeah. But either which way, yeah. So yeah, if, if you pick up Kingdom Hearts 2, we'll play through the first two. I don't know when we'll probably uh, have, put a, put a uh, what you call it, a break between 1 and 2, unless you want to play through immediately after 1. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We shall see. I, I wanted to give you a, a number on how long it would take you. I think 2 took me 12 hours. And they're roughly the same length. Memory serves. Maybe, maybe like one is a slight bit shorter. So it might have actually been that one is twelve and then two is like fifteen or something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, around you know ten to twenty hours of, of recording <laughs> for for either yeah. of those. Yeah. Well, that's assuming you don't do the 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 secret bosses though. I have to note. Oh no, secret bosses. Yeah. I mean, the secret bosses are, once again, one of those things where, like, if you don't want to do them, if we do them at all, if you don't want to do them, I'm fine with skipping them. Some people probably would complain, but whatever. Like, you know, we're doing these partially, so, so you, like, if you're doing these because, one, I want to expose you to, to, this, to the series that I like, but also you're, you're supposed to have fun. Right, <laughs> like, right. So like you know, if 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 you don't want to be, beat the, the the bosses immediately, then or or like at all, whatever. I ha- I haven't beaten most of those. <laughs> <laughs> As a note, like the, 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 like I, I look at Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts One, and I go, you know what? I'll I'll do this some other day. But once I've like level leveled up to a point where I can actually fight him, and I never actually sit down to level to grind the levels. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like the the. Final bo- or whatever the secret bosses are once again one of those things where like if you like the games, then I'm completely fine with being like, hey, we'll we'll go back to Kingdom Hearts one or we'll just do them in Kingdom Hearts two or whatever, and then just you know sitting down and and doing that for a couple of sessions, or who God knows how how long it it would actually take us, but still, <laughs> like there's a lot of things in Kingdom Hearts where like where we can just make them uh what you call it like optional content where like if you like the game. We can do this and that. But otherwise, we can just skip them and then save time. Right. Like, for example, Atlantis. Oh, sorry, Atlanta. Right. Atlanta. You don't need to... You don't actually need to do Atlanta in, in uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 unless you're, you're trying to either get the secret uh, video at the end or go for 100% completion. Which, I'm going to assume that you don't want to go for 100% completion on your first ever playthrough. Probably not. <laughs> it, it, it's a... Bold assumption to make, and I'd say it's an accurate one. Yeah, at Atlanta, I I wager will be one of those things where we unlock Atlanta, and then you you do the 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 prologue for Atlanta, and then what, the the first time the first time that we see a, a safe spot, we, because you quit the levels on the safe spot. Well, the first second, the second we see a safe spot, you you immediately go to the safe spot and just quit, and we never go back to Atlanta again. <laughs> it's too wet. Oh, uh, but yeah. So that's that's all I've done. All right, good stuff. All right, I guess we can call it a podcast. Maybe I'm trying to figure out what time it is. Uh, twelve fifteen. So we went a little over an hour. Oh, maybe not a little over an hour because yeah. I got here like ten minutes late. So yeah, we're, we're an hour and four minutes. Hour. All right. Yeah. And uh, Alex has not shown up, so he, it's possible he will. It's possible he will, like, five minutes after we end it. So I, I think we're yeah. good to end the podcast, though. So. All right. Well, then. Pink. Yeah. May your heart be your guiding key. That, that, that's a phrasal, right?